I will get the intro in. Hello, every ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the SLR Twitch channel, where you join us in a very wet spot. I, was, I forgot the name of the circuit. The circuit, Paul Ricard. It literally says right there on the Paddock Club, right there. Um, you join me, Max. Uh, Riggs in the commentary booth and I'm being joined alongside my ex. This intro could not went any worse. Um, but I'm back in the booth once again after my week off last week in Canada and I'm back here alongside Max. Max, how are we feeling? Uh, yeah, feeling good. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing hopefully another cracker over the free race. Uh, look like they've got a wet start at the moment, but... Uh, yeah, we'll see how they negotiate this first part of qualifying and uh, the rest. But yeah, I'm hoping to see some more uh, of the close battling we've seen in previous races and uh, yeah, maybe well, a lot more action as well. As the Differy usually has a lot of action, so. Uh, definitely, I feel like Division 3 is kind of the, the hub for the chaos and the entertainment. It does. And amongst all that it does provide exceptional racing as well like there has been various battles up and down in the field and i'm very much looking forward to seeing how these tricky conditions these very um it's the rain doesn't look too heavy like it, it is intermediates and we don't have any information whether it's going to be drying up at any point if it's going to get any worse but it is uh, um, i have have do have information by the way oh there we oh. yeah um so Gareth told me raining for the first five to ten minutes, then it should be clear from there on. So, so we could see dries. Is... We could see dries at the end of Q1. Yeah. We were, we don't I don't know yet. We'll see how fast it dry the track dries. Definitely, like I mean, the ta the, the intermediates and the the wet tires can clearly exist. Uh, like the exact figure of liters is is escaping me. It is something like sixty liters a second um, that the wet tires and the intermediate tires can like flick up through the ground and kind of clear the track so um, it is a very interesting statistic as well so I wouldn't be too surprised if the rain is to continue the way it is that we will start to see, you can already see, you know, one Boldy Baggy fan, you had said that he was the first one teammate. So jumped on board and, teammate has gone uh, you can, off oh. and spun again yeah his teammate uh, go on, I think spun at the fast right, the flat out right hander in the dry a um, bit more tricky in the wet, but yeah, he spun out of there, and I think the Mercedes, uh, one Mercedes anyway, had to well, abort. I think that's SP, yeah, SPH had to abort his lap. And ah, he's got his invalidated lap. I think he's going to have another go here. He has got plenty of ERS to work with on his lap. It has a clear lap, so he is probably going to go again. We will just stick on board with the Mercedes driver as he comes through turn one and two. It's a very, um, uh, it's a very like tricky left right when you're really good through it alone. Um, so I think that will be a bit of the track that will kind of catch the drivers out, especially getting into uh, turn one and two on the first lap when there's just twenty cars stampeding down to the the first two turns. I feel like there might be a bit of chaos there if somebody does like overshoot their braking or um, SPH is just overshooting. He's um, curb usage there in the middle oh. again, and then he just, he just made it for good measure there as well. So he's not really had the best start to his laps in this qualifying session. Um, Max had said um, there is going to be some clearing. Um, we definitely do expect to see it drying up. Um, that's the information we've got fed into our, into our ears. So um, this might just be, we don't know what it is for the race. We didn't. I don't know if you got the race into no, uh, No, just... Just quality, so a bit of an unknown um, race is there. I'm on board with Plumbers just got line, and you can just see uh, the from the start of the session it was the track was soaked, um, but now it's yeah, it's definitely getting drier. Uh, rain has yeah, rain has stopped now as well. So uh, there uh, you go. Just as I was on board with him, but the track's greasy, but the rain the rain stopped. The track's greasy, but I imagine. We'll see some dry tyres on the cars within the next five minutes or so. Uh, you can definitely just see. I'm on board. I'm still on board with um, Plum as he comes into this uh, tight chicane on the middle of the two straights. That um, you can just see, like the rain literally just kind of fizzled out there when you were 
um, just discussing the weather, and um, also it's, it's, it's stopped raining, like that's the good thing, but is it definitely going to be a matter of dry tyres at the end of this session? Do you think, do you think drivers will have an opportunity to actually set some times on it, or do you think this will be like a last dash, last, last ditch type kind of situation? Um, in terms of going on to the slicks. The track is getting dry quite quickly, but it is overcast at the same time, so it doesn't matter, but SLR Bean has retired from the session, and that is at the exit of the fast right-hander. Uh, I'm him, just going to flick. That is him officially out of the session. Um, it is yeah. so. Um, the shock retirement. And there's nobody coming up. Definitely. Alpha Towery, maybe. No, I don't know which one that is, Sprightly. Uh, he's just gone past, but he's gone now, yeah. So he's obviously gone through that right-hander like Crafty did and spun, but spun too far. And there's a wall that uh, creeps you there. Um, there is a party in the track where a different layout is used, but yeah. Uh, um, it's not. All DRS is enabled, as I say that, but yeah. Uh, not a great start for SLR Bean. Um, he obviously uh, missed the race last time out, um, but the last race he did do, he led every lap from pole position, so he won't be doing that today, uh, I... but points are awarded in the race. Exactly, we don't get we don't get the points on the Saturday. It's one of the um, over exercised phrases in Formula One. If I'm if I'm being quite honest with that, but I mean it, it is true. Like we don't get points on the Saturdays, um, but that really does put Bean in a situation where he's like all, all it really says to um, everybody else is still um, in the session that they just put a lap in, um, just, they just need to put a time in and they've bet him. Like, cause Bean's not got a time next to his name. He's going to be starting P20. If I'm, what, I'm still on board with Sprightly as he gets a big wobble on the on the small curb onto the big straight. I'm thinking that is turn seven, um, coming onto the first uh, DRS straight, doing into the chicane. I'm just on board with Sprightly, and you can just see like he is being like I think it's just a matter of knowing that the track is really dry now. It's dried up extremely quickly, um, so I don't. I'll only be too surprised to see everybody diving in um, to get some dry tyres on, but... Oh, and Sprightly's done the same thing! He's going to get in the wall! We're going to watch it! Oh, he's on his flip! Oh, he's gone. And he's... No, I, I, I just scrambling to get up to him, and I just missed the... Uh, just missed the crash. Uh, I think I'll be able to see the stream has got today. Oh, I just watched it back on the stream, and... Yeah, that is... Ooh. So yeah, uh, done the same. Where's Plum? Because uh, Plum's got a Plum's name's greyed out as well. He's I know. Time, he, though, so he'll he's be got a time, but he's dropped to the least. bottom. He's dropped to the bottom, so he definitely has. He's not retired in the pit lane. I don't know where he retired. I never saw a yellow flag um, anywhere. Um, I, the only yellows I saw was for Sprite Lake and into turn eleven. Um, yeah. And we see Cal Smith. Cal Smith's on the. Alpha Tauri now, so he oh and Steve was oh Steve was waiting to do the same thing, but is he going to he, no he's lost that again. He's oh. Going to hit the wall. oh, he's oh it's it's get the drives on. It's getting them. Get the drives on that this, car. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is time for the. Oh, there's an the, Alpha the Romeo coming. Come there's an Alpha Romeo coming. Oh, he's on an outlap, I think. So he's fine. He's on an outlap, so. Well, that, that that's your is... entertainment for qualifying so far. <laughs> the three starts off with a bang. Um, Definitely. Not it's... the bang type of bang we wanted, but uh, yeah. It's been it's been quite lively, uh, so to speak. The the wet weather's kind of made the drivers have to kind of think twice about how long the rain was going to really last for, um, and everybody was at one end of the just kind of get a general feel for the track, and then. I think, I don't really know, I've not been, I mean, we've saw incidents at turn 11 like that flat right hander, it's flat in the dry, in qualifying and in the race. I don't think it is flat in, like, tricky, greasy situations like it was at the start of the session. Um, and I think that's probably what the drivers were doing, it's either that or it's just the fact that they've maybe just got a bit too greedy in the curb. We did see Steve-O just have it there, fortunately enough he's still got... Um, all four wheels on the car, um, albeit he has lost um, a good deal of his front wing, so he'll be back in the pits and he'll be opting to put on the 
dry tiles. Um, and I think that I've just changed the tiles from best they fitted and everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Cal Smith and Steve are the only drivers still in the pits with intermediates selected on their cars, but everybody else is um, at least preparing themselves to come out for a soft run. Um, and I think that's going to be key. I think there's still six minutes left in the session. There is going to be plenty of time to get a lap in. Um, so I think this will be the kind of time where status will kind of be um, back to a form of normality in a sense. Like I think everybody will be coming out to get some dry laps and then we'll start to see some dry times coming in um, from the drills that are still in the session. Um, yeah. Um, oh, there's a crash. There's a big crash Wait on the pit straight. Wait up. Uh, on the pit straight, uh, yeah, you see on the bottom of flying them has just gone straight in the back of Baggy Fan. Um, it wasn't Baggy's fault. Baggy was sitting off the racing line, really. Um, but yeah, he just smacked into the back of Baggy on the pit straight um, and picked up a five face crew penalty and lost a load of front wing just as he finished his lap time. Level 131.6. Baggy was just off the racing line. Um, I don't know so, why he was off the racing line at that particular place, but yeah, I think maybe he had, maybe he like spun out of the final corner, or I don't know. But yeah, that that happened. Uh, I mean, I, I can't really comment on it too much. As soon as you were saying, oh, was up a crash, a crash, and I was like, oh no, where is it? Where is it? I'm just scrolling up and didn't like I'd completely forgot the the protocol to just like select the X button and go and do the select from the spectator menu. I was just flicking through every hoping to kind of click on it eventually, but um, uh, it's, it's interesting it, to say that it was odd. Well because there's so many, it's, I, I never seen it myself, so like, um, what was it, <laughs> like, um, what exactly <laughs> happened? Um, I've I just watched. It. I just watched Jules go off the track, lock up at turn one. Um, so I'm trying to find who's next to cross the line. Maxwell, is he going to come across the line? No, he pits. I want someone to come across the line. Cal Smith, right. So if you go on board with Cal Smith, so basically, yep. obviously he's just starting his lap. So um, the flying member comes all the way over to the right to start his lap, and Baggy Fan is waiting on the right, and just as he crosses the line, Baggy's sitting there on the track, just getting out of the way, and uh, Lemon just goes straight into the back of him after he crosses the line to finish his lap. So Baggy's just sitting, well, he's actually off the racing line, because that's not really a racing line all the way over to the right, so... Um, it's called a, like a diagonal, a bit like um, a bit like a China, where you go diagonally to the next braking zone, but uh, Lemon decided to go all the way to the right, and Baggy's car was just sitting there, and obviously the closing speed was a lot. Um, and then, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the Ferrari was doing, but yeah, they, yeah, I mean, Baggy's obviously made a mistake before he had to start his lap, and then it, it wasn't much he could do really. Um, I don't know, it was odd. Was Baggy and he was on the track? Yeah, he was or on the was track and the pit lane exit because the pit lane exit is quite sketchy as well. He was on the track. I went on board. He had val invalidated his lap before he'd even started his lap, or maybe he had... I don't know. Um, it was odd. I think I went on board and he invalidated his lap, so and he was on the pit straight. It made no sense. So maybe he went off the track at some point before he started his lap. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was it was odd. Like Cal Smith's doing now. He's going all the way over to the right, and yeah, well, I imagine Baggy Fan was, I imagine that Williams was sitting there, that's that's kind of what happened, crashing to the back, so, weird crash. It's, it's, on a, it's, it's, it's just one of the kind of incidents that kind of, it sounds like it kind of does just like bewilder you to see that it actually happened in the situation that it was, because it, it sounds just like, I honestly, even when you explain it to me, I'm still kind of like, how? <laughs> like, I'm just kind of like, how? And I feel like, I, I don't really know, like, we never saw it, so I, I can't, uh, I've kind of robbed the, the viewers of that slight um, opportunity to see what had actually happened, so I feel like that was the best we're going to get in terms of a description of it. Um, but you kind of want to obviously sh shimmy your car to the right anyway, like you said, like, that is a diagonal straight. Because um, you want to put your car to the right-hand side to get yourself set up for 
turn one and two as well. Um, but yeah, it's 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 right. I'm just gonna look and see if we're gonna watch somebody on a lap. Who Jules is just retired in the pit lane. Um, I don't really know why because the track's obviously be at its best now. Um, so maybe he didn't have enough time. Looks like he, yeah, looks like he just ran oh, out of time. Scott spun, sorry. Sorry to cut across oh, you there, Max. Scott spun oh. on his final run on the exit of turn two. There's, um, I think we won the own board. We had the broadcast camera. We've got to watch the Williams. The Williams Ooh. going through there as well. I think that is baggy fan, and it is. I just had a wee quick flick there since they're right next to each other on the timing sheet. But it just looked to me... As soon as Scott and the Ferrari was coming through turn one, turn one looked perfectly fine. Um, but it just looked like turn two, and it was just the fact that I think there might have been the slightest wee twitch at the rear of the car, and you could just see the rear of the car was just kind of getting a heat itself in a sense, and it just threw the balance of the car a bit, or well, a bit out of shape essentially, and that led to the spin. Was there a full 180, but it was enough to take him off the circuit, ruin the tyres, and ruin an opportunity to improve. So he is going to be right on the knife edge when it comes to the final runs and speaking of the final runs we are going to be on them right now so these laps will be final um the checker flag is out for q1 and we've lost dnf plum bean and sprightly already due to incidents in the the, the slightly tricky conditions that we had earlier in the session but we've got sbh and steve in the danger zone they have both still to put in a time for this session and we're seeing SBH coming through the final turn up to the line. He will be seeing the checkered flag wave as we see Gareth retire. SBH drives up to the line and it's going to be a 30.2. That puts him eighth. We'll quickly jump onto Steve to see if he's going to go in a lap when he is looking like he is still putting the hammer down through the penultimate turn and it's a very tight turn 15 and you want to straighten up as quick as you can and punch it as early as you can as well as the DRS is open, Steve was opting to go straight rather than do a diagonal run and it's a 130.2 and that puts him 8th faster so SBH and Steve both have improved pits. to 8th and Baggy pits as well so Baggy's not going to improve, Scott we spin on his final run, his coast time a place in Q2 and Ned Claw um, has managed to survive into Q2, both McLaren's into Q2 as well which is um, a good sight, and um, that's a slight bit of bias coming out there, I'll try and avoid that. <laughs> but, um, but, um, um, Max, I am quite yes. interested to know, because I'm sure Bean had his crash first, but he's 19. Um, that is, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe, uh, Bean got a bit further down the corner. Um, <laughs> on his lap. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he did crash first, um, but maybe Sprite was lower on the time screen already, so it, kind of the game just couldn't be bothered <laughs> to change him around. Um, <laughs> but, think, yeah, think, I, think, um, I think it might just be in the game. I think Sprite probably was behind Bean on the time screen, so it's just one of those things. Um, I'm sure they, neither of them wanted to be starting there. Do you think maybe the fact that both of them had a very similar incident and the fact that they both had the same bit of the, the, the same had, had the same mistake at the same bit of the track and had the same type of impact, but the fact that Bean's car landed a bit further along in his lap than Sprightly did, that's maybe why yeah. they've done it. I don't know. Mm, it, I don't it's, know. It's strange. I would have thought Bean would have been at the back, but I think... Um, I feel like Bean should have been 20th. I, I, I'm not saying this as any form of like, like, or just get him at the back of the grid. Like, it is probably <laughs> what it should have been. But, um, but I mean, he has up one place already, which is a slight benefit. Um, Sprightly will be um, taking up the place at the back of the field. And I think being at the back of the field it isn't as bad as you would think it would be here because, like, as I was, I was saying earlier, like that tight one and two, and it's it's got a bit of elevation, and that elevation is enough to um, create a bit of instability um, on the first lap. Uh, Flying Lemon has got a five-place uh, five red penalty. We'll just check and see what, why that is. Um, and we'll just look at it every one, so um, it doesn't actually say there. I don't know why it does they say there. What's that? Unless, uh, didn't they say a Flying Lemon's penalty, even though um, it says it's it a five-place red penalty? 
Uh, yeah, he got a five place crown when he hit the back of Baggy. Um, I didn't see Baggy's pop up, but it probably they probably popped up like straight after one another. Um, but yeah, um, I think. Oh, oh yeah, I see uh, it there. Yeah, I see it there. I was I was just blind. It's all right. <laughs> Baggy fans got the same as well, so Baggy fan will be taking up the the P twenty slot after being eliminated for MQ one. Uh, while we've got um, a small interval we're going to Q2 like we'll, we'll just have a wee bit of, the, um, a wee bit of chat action and see what's being said um, we've got um, Beasts uh, we'll get, um, I'm looking at I'm just going to go right up to the top of the chat Rando says like um, we've got Rando in the chat we've got Vision Gaming in the chat we've got uh, GSM Mac in the chat as well, saying that wasn't planned. Um, that was for the crashes. B says three three people out of the same corner, nearly four. Um, close finish. Nicky says we're washed up. That's nothing new. Um, <laughs> uh, Craig says Craig says um, not as sprightly. I think I can. Their teammates. Craig's actually knows here the night he would be in the Alpha Tower pair, not with sprightly. But, yeah. Um, He's no here, and I think that's why we've got um, a flying lemon. And I think he's a reserve, or is he full time now? Uh, I don't know. Cal Smith's the one who is deputising for Craig. Oh, um, aye, that's right. I don't a know flying why. lemon. <laughs> um, who's in the Ferrari? Scott and I've no idea. It was Scott <laughs> and George originally, and uh, George, yeah, George um, stepped down. Yeah, so George maybe he's. Back. Maybe it's full time. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, well, well, if we could get some clarification on that in the chat, that would be appreciated. But I, uh, Cal Smith is um, reserving for Craig since he can't make it, and Craig also says it's good to have me back in the booth. I mean, like, honestly, I, I thought I, I was um, like I had like another commitment last week, and um, I'd let uh, Max and I think it was Ham that came in, yeah, and replaced and stood in. So um, had Max and Ham. Um, last week, and I was watching uh, in and out, so I, I really enjoyed the stream last week as well. But it was, it was, um, it was actually, it was quite weird because I, it, like, I don't normally take the set of these off, and then to have one off, it was quite, it's quite a strange feeling. But honestly, good to be back. Um, Steve-O says that was close. Oh, that was close. You're cutting it, cutting it fine. Um, especially with that, 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 that incident through 11, but luckily enough we, we kept off four wheels on and we're seeing you in Q2 alongside Ned Claw, your teammate uh, Scott says, go further along the track. I mean, I mean, I don't even know what happened to like, Scott, it just looked like his car just stepped out, like it just kind of looked like the, the rear of the car was what he beat the front of it, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, but I mean, we, we've seen it, we've seen it before, I've not seen Division 2, um, so I actively encourage you to watch that after um, after this one. Um, Division 1, um, without ruining it, like, if you're kind of outside the top 10, it's kind of where you want to be, like, um, in terms of your strategy and your setup. So I don't think um, starting 16th would be the, like, uh, be-all, end-all type kind of situation. I feel like there, there is still plenty of opportunity for anybody to win. France is just one of the tracks, like, we saw it in um, Friday night, and... And I, I don't know what it's like Division Two, so I can't say. But I'll know ruin it if you've not watched it already. Um, so, uh, aye, there was there was that. Um, but um, Plum Girl has confirmed it for it as well. Max Jaws is last reserve now, so I think um, a lemon, a lemon, just a lemon is, <laughs> is full time. Yeah. Oh, get out of the way, Scotty. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So uh, we've got a lot of people on the mediums. A couple of people. On the softs, uh, Maxwell, Cal Smith, and a flying lemon on the soft compound tyres. 14 out of the 15 drivers are under track. Gareth choosing to wait as he's done that quite a few times. Um, a stat that Sprightly probably won't want to hear um, as there's a car park in the final sector. I think that is the fourth time this season he has crashed out of qualifying. Oh, Sprightly, cover your ears. <laughs> um, and. I mean, uh, I saw him last week in Canada, and he actually looked like a like decent pace. He was doing yeah. quite well in quality, for what I remember seeing, and like that definitely would have acted like a like a confidence booster, and it would have definitely have kind of put him in 
higher spirits uh, coming into uh, coming into this race. Um, but it was just massively unfortunate to, to like literally sit on board with his car and um, the car just kind of looked like it was it was just drifting in in the conditions and it was drying up at that point as well. So the intermediates didn't have the 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 level of grip they would have anticipated through there. So it was quite. Uh, unfortunate to see him have that incident, but um, definitely we want to. It'll be one to have a wee nosy at, um, once we get underway in the race, um, because I, th I feel like as much as pole position is important and a good qualifying place is, is key to a race strategy, France has really kind of shown us that it isn't really the be all and end all if you don't make it to Q3. Um, yeah, agreed on that one. Uh, Freeman says it's interesting to see how many people can get through on mediums. Um, I've just watched Dingle Dolphin go a mile off the track and somehow not invalidate. Um, he's still on his final lap by the looks of it, but he's got Scott Laney, his teammate behind, um, who's caught him up on the flying lap. So uh, be interested. Maybe get a little bit of toe at the end of the end of his lap here. As he comes across the line and go six fastest and I imagine Dingle Dolphin will have to go again as he did make quite a big mistake in the final sector uh, coming out of that long right-hander uh, but yeah four people yet set times Gareth hasn't ventured out of the pit lane yet but I guess he's probably waiting for everybody to uh, do their thing uh, Cal Smith should be thrown a 29.9 but he is on the soft compound tyre Maxwell on a 31-0 on the soft compound tyre and the flying lemon, I don't know if he's no uh, invalidated but I don't know why he hasn't come into the pits because you don't really want to be starting on three lap old soft compound tyres um, definitely yeah, we'll wait no, and see definitely no and talking about tyres Max that will kind of lead us swiftly on to the strategy one stop I feel like as the most popular um, way around the circuit for the 28 laps that we're going to be doing. Um, not, no 28, 27 laps we're going to be doing. Um, so I feel like a one stop as we see Joe's just completely cutting turn one and two. I think he is just going to try and get out of the way Ooh, of the series of SBH. And that Reno. is Dingle Dolphin, we just yeah. caught the tail end of that. And, um, Strategy. Talk about pit windows, Max. If the medium runners, I feel like that is going to be the dominant strategy here. Medium runners will look to pit about lap 10, 11, 12. Would you say that's a fair yeah, estimate? Yeah, that's. I'd say that is a fair estimate. Obviously, yeah. Uh, uh, safety car is a high clearance in Division Three. Um, we had only the one last week, and it was fairly late on. Um, so yeah, I think in the round France the crack is quite wide, but if someone's involved in a shunt, uh safety car usually comes out. Um we'll see on that one, but yeah, I think if there's no safety cars the entire race it will be around ten to twelve I would imagine. Um if there's an early safety car they could probably extend that. Uh, but it should be mediums to hards because the softs uh haven't really got Great tire life at all, so uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be going too long if there wasn't any safety car. But the media, uh, the soft compound tire runners, I would say we will, yeah, we'll definitely have to do a two stop because the softs will not last long enough for them to put on put on the hards, and the hards will be pretty dodgy come the end of the uh, race. So yeah, I think. You know, compromised starting on the soft compound tyres um, but if there's obviously a safety car then you're you're almost back in the race so we'll see um, but yeah a couple of people in danger but I think Gareth has finally ventured out of the pit lane and is on the, on the back straight and he's going to be on the medium tyres as well so we'll just sit on board with Gareth for the uh, the rest of his lap will just get through the final half of the circuit. Um, you'll have the pit lane literally on your right hand side there, so um, Gareth is just going to the back end of the circuit. Um, and what's going to be interesting to, 
um, anticipate going into the final stages of this session will be the matter of uh, if drivers are really going to shift off the the strategy that they're, they're on the now, like the medium start. Like, are we going to see the people outside the top 10 going to the softs to try and get themselves the track position and kind of um, compromise their strategy? Or are we going to just see medium runs and we're not even going to see Gareth putting a time on the board as he, as he stopped really early coming out of the pit lane, so um, Gareth um. is going to leave it for a very um, splash and dash final run. Um, so that's I think as well. I think I saw when he began and I jumped on board of him. He didn't open DRS at all. Um, so I don't know if he had a problem with DRS on that run, or he has a problem with DRS. Um, so we we'll wait and see on that one. Um, but he's going to be hard pressed without DRS to set a competitive time. Um, but yeah, we have Stevo on out on track, but he's not. On a flyer at the moment. Uh, Maxwell is on a flyer. Um, he's trying to beat his soft compound tyre run. Um, now on the mediums. Uh, a flying lemons on the soft compound tyres. Jules, Jonesy, Dingle Dolphin as well on the soft compound tyres. Um, Ned Claw on the mediums. It'll be interesting to see if Maxwell can beat the ears. Um, 300 a second shy of his of his best through sector two, so he is um, cutting it really fine here. So, like that's the kind of thing as well. I don't know. I mean, like he's 31 zero. I think should be beaten, like by most of the field. Really, I don't feel like that will be the cut off. I feel like it'll be like a, a 30. Um, like I mean, maybe a 31 actually. Max was. Like, I'm I'm kind of trying to weigh up the times and um. I'm no entirely sure because it's quite it's quite spread out. So um, I've seen that he does even beat his his soft time. So I mean that's the kind of thing as well. I don't know if maybe Maxwell's kind of sold the dummy to himself and um, he's kind of like bit into his own cherry essentially because he's set a decent enough time on the softs and now he can't beat on the mediums. And if he's wanting to beat it on the mediums, he's gonna have to like. <laughs> Day a few laps on them and increase the wear. So, I think we him trying to kind of like sell the idea to the others on the field. He's kind of just sold it to his sell to essentially. If he can't beat it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Gareth back out uh, on his what will probably be his one and only chance. Uh, may have time to go for another if he does make a mistake, but. Yeah, kind of fine at the moment. A flying lemon is coming towards the end of this lap. just passed uh, the Renault of I don't know which one it was, but I think Scott Lady coming round the final corner. We'll see what he can do then. And he goes again, goes all the way to the right, which is what caused his crash with um, Baggy Fan. But yeah, he's obviously. Made a mistake on that lap, so he's going to go. Oh, uh, going to go round again. Um, as there's a car park at the chicane, I don't really know what's going on, but I think Renault was getting out of the way. And I would feel like that's kind of that's that's something that's been quite. That's kind of something that's crept up on us is the fact that that is like for for a track like France, it's a very open plan, like. <sighs> like a very open plan and spacious circuit but yet we're finding small clusters of traffic um, as well which is quite interesting like you're saying there's the chicane there as well we've seen it um, just in the pit lane entry as well like I mean also like the drums can't really do too much it's just a matter of where you are on the track and where somebody else is at that exact same time but like it's it was surprising to see like small clusters and yellow flags being brought out for them when when you're normally getting out of the way, it's just a, a quick jump out the way procession. Like you just let the driver go, and there's no issue there. But um, Dingo Dolphin's out. Really been a cause for concern. Dingo Dolphin is going to be out of the session. He will be 11th at best. Um, we have got um, Dingo Dolphin, who has already been eliminated. Gareth is in the pits as well, so he'll be starting 15th. Disaster for Red Bull here in the south of France. Um, a flying lemon is coming up to the line, and he's taking that same line again, Max. He's gone all the way to the to the pit wall. 
and it does they get him out the safe zone, eh, the danger zone, sorry. Um, and I don't know if he's just going to keep the foot in and go again. We'll just sit on board with him because he is in danger. Steve-O is... Cutting oh, it fine. I don't know where he is on the track. He he's in the final sector, the but jump on board. he is cutting it fine. Um, he's doing a, doing a Hamilton at the moment. Um, whether he oh. has the pace of the likes of... Uh, we see, but it looks like he'll be fine. Um, just. Um, so I guess we'll stay on board with the McLaren driver. And you want to get us through a lap of the socket while we're on board? I will. Hopefully he uh, keeps it in between the lines. Comes down to turn one. No, it's an uphill entry. Goes, drops downhill, then back uphill. And then back down here. That's a very undulating first part of the lap. Coming into the fast chicane, turn three and four, runs a little bit wide at turn three, compromises the run through turn four, quickly into turn five. This is the apex there, but can carry the speed around for turn six. Tricky turn six, you have to get the power down quite early to use that run through turn seven down towards the chicane of turn eight. And he is doing fine at the moment, but needs to close the lap out. Hard braking into the chicane, clip the apex on this inside and turn in early for the right hand right hander and then get on the power early power down towards the fast flat out right hander as he goes through the first second one second up on his time as long as he keeps it within the confines of the track should be fine into this long sweeping right hander wait to pick up the power pick up power now does that pretty well breaking into turn I think it's turn 12 takes the apex nicely Runs out wide for turn 13, flirting with the track limits there. And turns in to turn 14, run it out wide a little bit, then cut back in for the entry of turn 15. Get on the power as early as you can, as you take the shortest route to the line, as he does. What will the time be? Should be enough to get him through. And it is a 1.29.6, and he is fastest? fastest of the session. Steve all tops the time and charts as he gets himself into... Q3 alongside Cal, Smith, Dodgy, Jester, Jonesy, Jules, Hypers, the two Mercedes are Paul and SBH and a Flying Lemon all making it through to Q3. And we've got Scott Laney just narrowly uh, missing out there. Um, yeah. Maxwell retired. Dingle Dolphin had uh, caught it early and he had pitied early. Ned Claw just didn't come out the pit as he was starting 14th and Gareth just couldn't really get a lap hooked up in Q2 and he is going to go timeless and and he'll be starting in P15. Um, and Steve-O's time at the end of the session there's definitely got um, a, bit of the, a bit of his fan club um, um, hyped up a wee bit there. Um, and Freeman's even went a bit further and says Steve over Paul. I mean, if he can, if he can keep the consistency and keep the, um, can I keep the momentum, then I definitely don't see why he can't. He? Uh, Maxwell has also said that he, he thanks, he thank God that I got knocked out. Done my soft run on used softs, couldn't beat it on fresh mediums and didn't allow enough time for a further run. Biggest sigh of relief. I think he is definitely, uh, we were sitting saying about how he had um, kind of really um, sell the dummy to his cell essentially, but I think um, his blushes have been spared due to his elimination right near the end of the session, so he will be thankful for that. It does also give him the opportunity to start on the mediums now that he's got a free choice of tyre as well. Um, but who don't have a free choice of tyre is the top 10. As they'll be having to start on the tyre that they put their times on. And we've got Steve and Cal, um, we've got Jonesy and Jules, Paul and a Flying Lemon all having to commit to the soft tyre strategy. Um, we've got Dodgy, Jester, Hypers and SBH through on the mediums. So they are in a prime position here if they can be a still a run in the final session and get themselves a decent grid slot for the race. Yep. Uh, Maxwell, I think he's, yeah, Maxwell sees happy that he got knocked out um, in the end uh, on soft compound tyres. Um, but yeah, I think he'll use a fresh set of mediums or hards, whatever he fancies. Gareth obviously had some issues. Um, I don't know what but yeah i noticed that his drs didn't open but yeah i thought he'd still plow on and try and complete a lap 
Um, he might as well. Uh, but yeah, we wait and see what issues he did have. Uh, but he won't be taking part in the final call of action, so there will be no Red Bull, um, which is quite a strange sight to see in recent times, um, taking part in Q3. But we do have the two racing points as per usual. Uh, two Mercedes as well, that doesn't happen very often. Um, and yeah, Jonesy back in Q3 once again. Uh, Crafty always has good pace. Cal Smith, when he turns up, does have good pace as well. Uh, Jules back in Q3. And uh, yeah, Steve-O. Um, setting the time screens alight. And yeah, one Ferrari as well. Oh, a flying lemon. As the cars start filtering out on track, we have Crafty as our first car on track once again. Wanting to get a good feel for the track and get their bunker laps in early. I mean, just looking at the start of Q3 compared to what it was in Q1, and it was very dreary, it was very drab, it was very dark, it was wet, and the space that, and well, in real life, it would be about, about what, is about half an hour? We've been streaming for about half an hour, would you say? Um. Uh, between uh, Q1 and Q2. I think that works out about half an hour on how quick the, the change of the conditions change. Um, uh, yes, eighteen minutes. Eighteen minutes, fifteen minutes, and twelve minutes for all three sessions. Nice. Right, so, in the space of that time as well, um, the weather's changed quite, um, uh, quite dramatically as well. Um, but while we're in the early stages of Q3. Um, let us know who you think is going to be on pole position, who's going to have the best seat in the house for the five lights, and who's going to be your top three. Um, I will ask Max if he's want to throw his predictions out there, and I'll see if I want to do that as well. We know how strong the cars can be at times. Um, yeah. Um... We will see. Oh, who will I go for? Um... Well, for me, it's it's hard to look past the two racing points. Um, they're usually inseparable. Um, what was it seven inches they were separated by last week? Um, in terms of their time, I can't remember how much, like a few milliseconds. So, um, Dodgy got the honours last week. Can he get the honours today? I don't know, but I think I'm going to go with Hypers or pole position um, ahead of Dodgy, then another car. Um, don't know which, but I'll say uh, Cal Smith. I think... I think... <laughs> um, uh, uh, the racing points are quick. I'll give you that. They are quick. They are definitely quick. They've got a really strong partnership, they've got a really strong work ethic as well, like they're always putting the effort in, they're always got the speed regardless of where we go, they're always there or thereabouts fighting for a decent points haul week in, week out, and as you were saying last week they had split the, they had got a 1-2 in qualifying by a mere, uh, a mere few metres, um, so they are definitely like almost evenly matched in pace. Um, Jester, talk about pace, is set at the early benchmark, which is immediately beaten by Dodgy. Um, and they, I think Dodgy will get back to back poles. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think it might actually be his teammate that takes that particular honour. I think, I don't think it will be a racing point front row either. I think Jester might have something in the tank. Um, we know how good he can be at just putting it a a lap and finding an extra 10 for 2 when he needs it. Um, we've also got Jonesy who's always able to get himself in the mix as well. Cal Smith I would probably say is going to be third. I'd, I'd do that as well. Um, I think it'll be Hyper's Jester. Smith, uh, Cal Smith. I think that's how it's going to line up. I think Hyper's might just miss out and get fourth. Um, and then the 50-10th the, the can arrange themselves. <laughs> um, I really couldn't tell because it is a very, it is a very um, fiercely competitive field um, in Division 3, I think. It is very 
um, balanced in terms of competition and actual skill and racecraft and all, all the all the boxes that you tick to be a lead racing driver. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works, but I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, let's hear for you. Is there anybody that's got their predictions in the chat while we are going to see some drivers coming into the uh, coming into the pits once more? We have got uh, one prediction already, and that is from Eslar Bean himself saying dodgy hype as Cal Smith, so he's gone the other way around for the racing points. Um, but yeah, at the moment, hype is staying in the pit lane. Um, I don't know where he's just going to give himself one shot at pole, which is quite risky. Uh, I think with six minutes left, he is going to give himself one shot at pole. So uh, he's gone for the risky move because if he messes up, then he's going to start um, at the best at the moment eighth as uh, Cal Smith starts his attempt for pole position. And he's the only man out on the track, so he's got the track all to himself. Track day for the Avatar. Definitely. The only. The only. That invalidates oh. invalidating. I was, was going to say the, the slight danger about him putting his lap in right now would mean that I think he wouldn't be able to put in a lap time right at the end of the session. And I think he's just immediately put himself on the same boat as. Um, I would say a flying lemon in Hypers because they've no put times in, but Hypers is literally coming out onto the track, he is on the track actually, in a flying lemon, you can see the red dot in the pit lane, um, just shimmying along and coming back onto the track as well, so they're coming out relatively early if I'm being honest, I feel like I would much rather risk a one, sh a one lap shootout for my pole position than come out a bit early and burn the tyres out in day two runs. Like, I would leave it to the last possible moment. I think the latest that we can see drivers coming out would be about... If the pole time is going to be a, a 129, I would definitely say it would be about a... Uh, uh, you would leave, you'd want to leave the pits and turn the limit off with at least two minutes left. Um, but come out, get your fresh set of tyres on, get your fuel levels right, and it will be about two minutes 20 left in the session, and that's when you want to have your car trundling out onto the track in a quick uh, a quick outlap in the the final sprint for the finish. Um, you want to leave it as late as you possibly can because the track is always continuously getting better as well. So you really want to leave your final runs late. And France is quite bad in the sense that you were saying like it is quite risky leaving it late. It's some circuits. France is, I would probably say, is one of them because there is plenty of opportunities to get a track extended as well as a spin for Cal Smith. And he is not going to feel. He is not going to be starting third. So everybody says he's gone. Um, oh, he's gone there. Just, it's. Uh, I was just on board own, with hypers at the board. moment. Oh yeah, I can I see. Own, he's gone in backwards. I was on the broadcast camera, and he had basically just come through turn six, and I think it was just a matter of keeping the fit in. Because you want to try and feather the, the throttle through turn 6 before like putting the fit down for turn 7 and onto that big straight. You want to try and get as much of a punch off that exit. And I think he's just tried to get a bit extra purchase, but the only purchase he's got is a, a ticket to the wall, um, essentially. It just mm. like his car, it was the same thing. His car just kind of looked like the back end has just stepped out and I think it is just maybe the fact that he's, he was a bit keen on the throttle, it's how it looked um, if we could get information on that for him if he is watching the stream or whatever we'd like to know how that happened, I think it is just a matter of I think it is just the fact that he got keen on the throttle and the car just wasn't really responding uh, in the manner that he would have wanted in the cars Oh you know, wow like, oh, that's close again 6 milliseconds <laughs> I don't even know joined at the hip <laughs> definitely like they've got like the, the, the similarities in their race uh, their qualifying one lap pace is, is, is quite um, it's quite scary to reflect on because um, we saw it last week in Canada they were split by a mere I think it was two thousand for a second. I think you said that earlier. Uh, yeah, it's not like two or three thousand. So, 
Oh, well, well ignore yeah. that, because SPH has just absolutely <laughs> smashed the pole position time. SPH is just hitting one out the park there. We are 129.0. Are we going to see a 128? That is the question. That's a quick fire question. Are we going to see it, Merx? 128? <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we'll, we'll be seeing anything quicker than that. That is one hell of a lap. Um, yeah, we'll have a lot of people going. I think Hypers is actually gone again. Um, he has. So we'll see what Hypers can do. He's coming around the final corner now. Important to get a good exit. He uses the curb on the outside. What's it going to be? Is he going to get the 128? He doesn't just miss it out by six, what's that, five hundredths of a second. Yep, very close at the front of the field there between those two. It's very nip and tuck. I mean, I think there could be a 128 on the board. I will, um, if I was a betting man, I would probably put a, put a pound on it, if I'm being honest. I'm not doing that <laughs> phone. Um, but, um... I think we can definitely see a 128. Um, I don't know who Fado, but I definitely feel with the fact that the track is just getting better, like it always does near the end of the session. If you're leaving it late enough, um, then you can definitely get yourself the best opportunity for the best grid slot. Um, a flying lemon is... I don't know if there is some kind of trick to, that the, to, the, to the starting... Oh, like off the final turn, sorry. Because... I've seen a few drivers just throw their cars to the to the pit wall and just kind of like drive along there. Oh, dodgy's off. Like, I've seen. Uh, yeah, I'm oh, not. Hypers. <laughs> no, no, oh, dodgy. dodgy I was on. I was on board with dodgy and he ran wide. Oh. Sorry, minute off. Not oh. the yellow flag uh, that Hypers is creating at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'm not oh. quite sure. As crafty oh. has uh, delivered has... for you. What a lap what a guy, from the Williams man. driver. What a guy, man. Dodgy, yeah, Dodgy's oh, well. backed out. Maybe who else is on a lap? We've got Steve on a lap. He's just going to come up across the line. He hasn't budded. He's just down into the pits. That is really dirty. Paul, um, is Paul going to improve? He is up to four tenths of a second. That will put him um, from P5 up to P5. Um, we have I've worked that out, but is this last sector going to be enough to jump dodgy split the two racing points yellow flags are waving the checkered flag will be there as well is he going to split them he is not um who else have we got we've got a lemon and he's done by nearly seven tenths a second on his lap as well so he will not be improving and i think that's it as the cloud reappear once again and the rain will once resume but it is crafty that does get us into the 128 by a fraction and it is a fraction. <laughs> and um, that has definitely been a very exhilarating qualifying session, if I'm being honest and saying so myself. Uh, we didn't really catch any of the fast the, the, the fast laps at the end, um, so we can send our apologies out for that. But we'll pass our congratulations to Jester, SPH and Hypers um, for the top three. Um... And this is your time for a small interval. Yep. Um, let's have a look. Oh my god, what a lap. Whoa, a great lap. Wow, crafty. Um, yeah, Nikki said what a lap for SVH and then crafty comes along and says, uh, no thank you, this pole position is mine and he has taken it. Um, so, yeah, I... Uh, I was not expecting that, but you know, I think I uh, the jinx is still alive, as I uh, said, Kyle Smith would be in the top three, and he crashed. So um, yeah, move um, third and fourth, Hypers and Dodgy next to each other in uh, in the Barbie cars, as uh, Jules called them. Um, yeah, he said I should put that in the broadcast, and I have. There you go. Um, well, it's it's quite dark here as well, like, the clouds are still here, they're still persisting, so, 
Um, we've got a small five minute break. This is your opportunity to go and get a toilet break in, get the kettle on, get the dinner in, um, stretch your legs if you need to. Um, just ask myself my next questions. I don't know if you're going to be here with it. I've got nowhere to be, so I will be here. Um, no, I'll stay. Um, so we've got myself and Merck's here, so if you've got any uh, questions, queries, predictions, thoughts, feelings, anything um, on your mind about the race, please let ourselves know, and we'll do our best to um, engage and communicate with you through the chat. Um, and while we're here, we might as well talk about the race itself. It's 27 laps, and we are going to talk about the top three. If you want to send us predictions for top three, and if you're being brave enough, feeling brave enough, go for the fastest lap as well. Um, I will back, back to Merckx. I don't know if... The cost was strong with Merckx. I myself predicted Cal Smith for P3. He ends up starting P10. Um, so we are we sent us in serious apologies to him as well. Um, so... Um, we've got... Um, you've got a fan in the form of Nicky saying Merckx will win. Um... <laughs> I love to see me win the Dib Free race, but um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is a winner. He's 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 commentating in France. No, actually driving it. I mean, France isn't he really a personal favourite of mine. If I'm being honest, I don't know if that's the same for you. I don't know if you like this circuit or no, or you um, would you give this a hit or a miss? That's the question. Um, no, it's not one of my favourite tracks, but yeah, um, it's a good track to race on. Um, despite what we see in real life, it's much better. You get more uh, racing opportunities in the game, um, as you would. Um, but yeah, thank you, Sazidrad, the goat duo back in the com box. I love it. Um, yeah, I love to see it. Jay Geddes, any pigeons? I mean, um, I don't know. Oh. Ask Sebastian Vettel, uh, but they were seagulls he saw, so. <laughs> um, do you think do you think Sebastian Vettel will be a guy that would own pigeons? I kind of like folk own pigeons, like they like they, they train pigeons to like race them in that. And it's a, I mean, a random fact that I remember one of my pals had said to me the random like the random fact is that a racing pigeon like the most the most expensive racing pigeon was like one point five mil. I think that's what he said it was. One point five million for a pigeon. Yes. <laughs> Like, oh dear. Um, um, so, um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm definitely sure that's what he said. Um, we've got. That's not something you hear that. every day. Definitely no. I mean, like this is this is what the intervals are for. It's mainly for engagement. Of course, we would try and encourage you to talk more about the race. But if you've got anything, like I don't mind answering it. Like, I mean, it might create a slight deviation for what we're actually streaming, but. Um, it is an interval, like, can I treat it as you will? Like, if you want to sit and talk to me and Max about a pigeon, we'll try our best to answer. <laughs> I don't get any pigeons, I couldn't tell you anything about them, but, like, I just kind of buds. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I'd be, I'd be quite alarmed if there were, like, something else. Like, if they're, like, big penguins or something. Um, um sorry, chat. I forgot about a flying lemon grid friendly completely. Uh, he's dropped down to P14 on the soft compound tyres, so uh, we'll watch out for him at the start of the race. Uh, which elevates Cal Smith up to ninth. We have Bangy Fan at the back of the grid due to his grid penalty, not that it wasn't really his fault. Um, uh, we have Bean and Sprightly, uh, in that case, who've been elevated to one position. Uh, yeah. Hards for the two drivers at the back. The rest on mediums outside the top 10. Obviously a flying lemon on the softs, but he got through to Q3 on the softs. So, yeah, everyone besides the back two uh, have chosen mediums. Uh, Scott Laney elevated up into P10. So he starts inside the top 10 on the medium compound tyres, so he may be one to watch out for. Um, but the top four start on mediums. Here's noticing I'm I'm on the race director as well, like while you were scrolling through and uh, just kinda you know, as a run down. What I've noticed in terms of tire selection is you've got a block of four at the front on the mediums. Um, so they're in the best possible place to start. 
Then you've got Paul, Jonesy, Jules, Steve-O and Cal all in the, the softs. And then it's another medium wall of four with Scott Laney, Maxwell, Dolphin and Ned Claw. And then a, fl- a, a flying lemon just splits that. And then there's another medium wall of four with Gareth, uh, with Gareth, Scott, Plum and Bean. And then you've got two hards. So a flying lemon really kind of um, triggering the OCD um, people with the with the, the soft tiles just planted right in the middle of the the two yellow walled walls of four on either side. Um, that is due to his penalty, as Max was saying, he had made contact with Baggy Fan um, and Q1, and both of them have paid the price with that with a five-place red penalty each, so a flying lemon's 14. Baggy Fan is at the back of the field. Um, that does promote Bean, Spraley and Plum, who didn't set a lap in Q1, um, so they're all up an extra place. The session is about to start. Um, we'll yeah. have a quick glance at the chat if there's anything um, anything of note before we um, get underway with the permission lap? Uh, Riggs and Merckx are my heroes, but Midsy is the goat. Nah, Merckx is uh, Midsy's the the bottle job. He's not the goat. <laughs> um, so um, uh, I, 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 I don't listening. know if he genuinely hates me. I genuinely hope like he does not hate me saying that all the time. Like, like I mean, like you can't. He's, he's a very He's a very like banterous person, so I'm hoping that that is taking away a bit of light-hearted um, banter, if you want to call it that. But um, that's um, that's how I know Midzy. Um, yeah. Um, um, Zydrad said in the comments, "What you can't go, you can't go wrong with Riggs and Mercs." Uh, yeah, and then they're just talking exactly amongst each the, other. It's the it's like the it's like the Sunny and Cher and the Mokum and Wise and the Reeves and Mortimer and the Mercs and Riggs. That's that's how that <laughs> is. It's the it's the dynamic duo. I couldn't actually ankylate many duos to be fair. So that that might have fell yeah. a bit flat, but um I think we need the old uh so. floodlights on around uh Port Ricard it's at the quite, moment. It's quite dull, isn't it? Like it is quite it's oh, SVH is almost rear end. It's crafty on the formation up. Uh, that would have made for an um, interesting start. So, we've got the predicted pit stop strategy at the bottom of our screens. As I've got a, uh, I think I did have something flying across my screen in my room, so I'll try and get that when I can. Um, but um, the predicted pit stop strategy was for the medium runners. It would be about lap ten to twelve, like we're saying, and uh, qualifying. Uh, that will be the the main window of opportunity for the drivers to shift off the mediums and onto the hards, and that will easily run onto the end. I don't think tyre wear on the hards is actually that excessive, so management, as they even with safety car on their safety car, it's definitely, um, it definitely is the route to go in my mind. Um, so. Um, while we're going to have Jester and SBH and. The two racing points are hypers and dodgy, um, taking us back to the field. Are we going to be brave and are we going to predict a race winner? Let us uh, know in the chat in Mex. Let me know. Just notice that uh, Crafty has a keep fighting Michael helmet on. Uh, nice touch oh. for. Where's that? Uh, Crafty's helmet is the keep fighting Michael oh. helmet. I'm going to predict that. Dodgy will win. <laughs> dodgy, dodgy for P4. It's it's definitely not out of the question. I think this is literally anybody's game. But we'll just a lead from start to finish. I think it'll be a battle. But anyway, we're going to see my prediction's going to be put on hold as we're going to see the lights coming on. The skies are grey. The lights are on. The five lights are on. The cars are revving, and we're going to be racing. And we're away here in Paul Ricard in the south of France, and we've got a good start here for Jester and SBH is going to have to go run the outside into turn one. Is he going to make it work? As we see everybody goes and Jester holds the place. SBH is still in P2. The two racing points are switching, and the, I think that's Hypers away off there on the outside of turn two. The Alpha oh, Romeo is a spin driving, up. and there's a spinner as well. And that's the Mercedes. Of I think that will be Paul because SBH is still right up next to um, Jester at the front. We've got Maxwell well. sitting um, quite nicely there in uh, P. I'm trying to work that out, but I think I might just go <laughs> a bit further down, which I have. Um, looking at the, the timing sheets, we just need to let them do their business and we'll get this all filtered out, but it is Jester that still Steve leads SPH, right. is under pressure, he is under pressure, Fee. I'm scrolling, uh, I'm scrolling oh, in SPH, 
and well, what's happening? Um, we've got Jonesy, Cal Smith. Cal Smith's already up three places on the soft. steve -O's up a place as well. Scott Laney already into eighth in pressure on steve -O. Tucking into the slipstream. ERS is active, so steve going to have to slide to the inside. Is Scott Laney is going to go up the inside into turn 11. Is he going to give him the space? steve -O chooses to let him have the play. steve -O. is he going to go down the outside of turn 12 on the first lap? Now he's going to tuck in, but we see Jules just drifting wide there through the long sweep in turn 12. steve -O's going to have to settle in behind Ned Claus up a few places as well. Let us get the position changes up as well, and we'll see Gareth who's made the inside. Most of Baggy, that start. Baggy's made a pretty decent start. He was up to 13th. Plumbers taking that position back off him. Scott and Gareth are going out. There's a lot going on in this final sector as the car pulls into the pit lane of Maxwell, and Dingle Dolphin is forming a big train behind him uh, earlier in this race. So that is where the main battles are happening at the moment. But Crafty keeps his lead and has a Decent lead on the opening lap. Definitely, we saw it, the, the 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 front five six got away relatively quite well. Jester got a decent enough launch off his grid slot to keep the place. I thought SPH was going to be alongside, but the camera gives you, um, it kind of deceives you in terms of depth perception. I thought SPH got a bit further alongside, but Jester had the place. And Hypers is having to go wide, and he's maybe overtook his teammate off the track there. Is Dodgy didn't get a strong exit onto the big straight as well? And we're going to see Jonesy having to defend for Cal Smith. He's going to have to go around the outside into turn seven and eight. Is he going to make the move stick? Jonesy just defends, but he's getting himself out of shape. Oh, and he's touched Cal, and there's damage. And there's damage there. Cal Smith was, he was just cutting his way through the field. Steve-O is going to have to be wary of the damage. I don't know if he saw the, the carbon fiber flying in front, but he'll know that Cal Smith, you can just see him understeer him through turn 11 and through turn 12 as well. So, um, Cal Smith, I mean, he it was, it's like a hot knife oh, through oh butter. And then, oh, no, get the... Oh, we've got Scott Laney up the inside. That's no one overtaking place there. Jules is getting run the outside there, and I think he's benefited from Scott Laney's rather ambitious move into turn 12. Scott Laney's going to settle for ninth. But if we're talking about MD, it's made big places off the start. We're going to have to talk about Plum, and we're going to have to talk about Baggy Fan. Both up six places. Big losers there on Paul and Maxwell doing 8 and 15, respectively. Cal Smith, when it rains, it pours. Picks up some damage, and then picks up a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. It couldn't have really be gone um, any worse for him. Um, after such a strong start on the soft tyres, we're going to see um, Scott Laney getting by Steve. -O. That was oh, that's no Steve. -O, that's Ned Claw. Sorry. Um, so we've got Jules and Ned uh, Scott Laney um, fighting for P7 here as well, and they're just behind Steve -O in sixth place as well. As the grid is starting to kind of space itself out a wee bit and try and create a wee bit of space. Um, they've got a, we've got a Jester's done quite well. He's just got SPH outside his DRS zone as well, so he's going to try and um, build the gap. But talking about building gaps, I don't know why I said that, but we've got Hypers getting by SPH on the straight into the breaking zone of turn 8. He makes the move work. Easy Ozzy. Does give SPH a wee squeeze on the, on the outside there to make sure that he was going to try and hold it around the outside to get the inside. And SPH is just going to have to settle for being in behind. And Steve is going to have to pick up a three second time penalty for exceeding track limits. We will try and avoid penalties. That will um, we try and keep the suspense pretty gripping, pretty real. Um, so we'll try and deflect for that as much as we can. Gareth um, on Baggy. Oh, that's going to be close since the fast round up. Gareth does make the move on Baggy. Will Baggy have a look oh. back? Doesn't look like it. Oh. Baggy fan had a... He, Baggy had a, a, he had a wee cheeky look up the inside into turn 12. And I, I thought he was going to date as we see um, Gareth looking up into turn 13. And um, uh, it's... And Gareth is not, hasn't really been... I mean, talking about um, race, the, the start of the race, Baggy fans kind of go to sell in a, in a strong position. We're going to see the soft runners pitting in about lap uh, two or three laps anyway. That's when the tyres really step properly dropping off. Um, but um, talking about um, the soft Bean. runners, we'll jump on... Oh, yeah, being okay. up the inside. Oh, there's a spinner... There's a Ferrari of Oh, and it's lemons. Scott. Oh, no, it's not Scott. It's, it's, it's a flying um, lemon. It's lemon. He's just hit the I rear just wheel. The tail end. He just hit the rear wheel of Bean going through turn two. It does tighten up on the entry um, into that corner as you come through turn one. And, uh, yeah, he just stuck his nose in. He was probably better off backing out. And he's uh, taking the penalty for staying... In sticking his nose in and beans, so lining up baggy fan already as uh, Gareth's all over the back of the other variety of Scott. We'll just jump on board with that then. Now, 
and Gareth is slowly making a bit of headway, but he's not made as much headway as his teammate being started 18th, he's up to 15th as well, and both of them effectively on the, the same piece of track um, as well, Baggy Fan splitting the pair. Um, but we'll talk about Baggy Fan as well, started um, last, yellow oh, flags out a, in yeah, uh, sector 2. Um, and we're starting to really see a bit of a um, bit of, like group safety car. The safety car. I don't know what that's for. Out. We've seen Stevo dive into the pits. This could be a lifeline for the soft runners. It's a matter of taking it if it's there. Um, Stevo will be looking to hopefully put the hard zone and try and stretch the cars to the end. He's got he mediums. Has the mediums. I think that's a smart we'll choice. That I think that's a smart I'll choice. Uh, I don't think the hearts would have made it to the end from here. Um, sure. The hearts had a lot of grip. Yeah, I just don't think they had had enough wear or enough life to make it to the end. Uh, I think he's better off doing a double medium. Uh, We'll have probably have more pace that way, anyway. Um, I mean, yeah. See, no, but I mean, like, I mean, to be fair, like, talking about the situation that he's pitted under is the safety car. The safety cars came out. It's lap five of twenty-seven, and the safety cars out. Um, don't know what for. Um, I don't know if it's maybe just for damage. I'm assuming that's what it's going to be. There's just going to be an excess amount of carbon fiber somewhere. Um, but we've got SPH and hypers practicing their overtakes on each other under the safety car. Um, we saw SBH and Hippos swap places a couple of times um, under this yellow, but um, I, I mean, I don't know, like, Steve-O like, let's see the stops, let's see the pit stops. Right, we've got Steve-O, Smith, Kyle Smith, Maxwell, Paul, and Lemon all making a pit stop, and they have all changed the tyres, they don't need to they, they've done the two compound rule, so they are pretty much good to go. Um, Mediums, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm thinking about it, and I'm kind of swaying more towards it in a sense, because he's going to get track position as well if everybody's just going to step foot on him now. Like, I doubt the medium runners will come in, and I also doubt the hard runners will come in. It'll be a matter of, is Jones and Joe's going to come in? 5th, 5th, and 6th. I think they should, because the soft tyres will only get much <laughs> much better for here. Um, so, maybe you've got a point. Uh, maybe the medium, the double medium strategy is the way forward. Have we yeah, seen fine. Jonesy and Jules in? Yep. Right, no, that's fine. Um, so, um, we can use this, this safety car period to have a small reflection on what's happened. And we can see what's happening in the chat as well. Um, Zydrad Freeman. was asking why there was... Oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, Freeman <laughs> said, Freeman said hards won't make it. Uh, so yeah, he's agreeing with what I said. They do both go on mediums as well. Uh, but we'll come to the back of the pack. I think Steve-O was lucky. I think the safety car came out just as he was arriving to the pit lane uh, entry and Jonesy and uh, Jules had already gone past it because the pit lane is on the exit of uh, or, well, in the middle of turn 14. Um, if you're at the final corner, you can't pit, or it's not on, like, the pit straight or anything, where you can just pull over and come in. Um, so, yeah, got unlucky with that. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, we'll see what Steve can do from P14. Definitely, I think. So, in terms of the medium strategy, then, so, he's went on to the mediums. So he is definitely gonna have to pit again. So that no, I mean, I mean, thinking about it, when you're looking at it in fairness, nobody's on the soft nope. tires anyway. Safety car's gonna come in at the end of this lap anyway. But if we're talking about um, the safety, if we're talking about um, Stevo and uh, Jonesy and Jules, they've all pity for mediums. So effectively, looking at it now, they're running an effective 14th, 18th, and 19th because everybody still needs to make another stop. But they've got the benefit of fresh tyres, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm still quite on the fence. I kind of feel like the hards could 
maybe get to the end, but I mean, I don't actually know. I don't even make it to the end of my race, so to ruin that one for you, but um, like, <laughs> to, <laughs> um, to, um, to talk about getting hers to the end is, is another thing. Um, I think six is a bit early. I would maybe I said maybe made about lap eight, nine. If that was the case, I would jump on the hards then. But um, talking about making the jump, is Jester already away? He is. He's already bolted, and Hypers has kind of been. He has not really been left behind, but Hypers still looking like he's trying to get some temperature into the tires. We have a couple of wiggles down the straight, but we are back underway, and we're back onto racing conditions. And we've got the top four basically all within a second. Scott Laney and Ned Claw have both been dropped off here. <laughs> uh, Plum and then Scott's been dropped off again. He's got a bit of a train behind him. And is it off filter then trying to get a place or two off the restart there as well. We've got Gareth just going round the outside a baggy fan there into P10. Dingle Dolphin splitting Scott and Gareth. Um, they're on ninth. And he's getting right close. And he's going to go up the inside. And he's going to have to cut it to avoid the action there. To avoid any form of contact there. So Dingle Dolphin looking a bit out of shape on this restart as well. And we're going to have Gareth right on the back of Dingle Dolphin here. And this should be easy pickings for the Red Bull driver. But Dingle Dolphin is going to try and defend it. And he will have the slip stream with the Ferrari in front. But Gareth is going to go up the inside into the braking zone. Is he going to give him a bit of a squeeze? He is. And oh, there's a big crash. Oh, there's contact with Baggy Fan. And there's Baggy fan that he's just come in way too hot um, into turn eight, and that's effectively ruined his oh, run. Battle for the lead. I didn't. Oh, battle for the lead, battle for the lead. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Well, he's backed off a bit now, but he was within. <laughs> he was under two tenths uh, briefly. But yeah, like you say, he came in way too hot. Um, like. Um, we've got, I mean, that's the kind of thing as well, like, Jester got a really good start, and they'd already bit bridged the gap between himself and SPH. Yeah, a second, so he was the end of DRS, and he was going to be put under pressure for the, the racing point. And then, that safety car's effectively ruined them as well. In a sense. It's no, it's no devastating, but you don't really want to have your gaps, like, eliminated, essentially. Um... We had that happen to him in Monaco when he was leading in the safety car came out and kind of ruined his strategy there as well. Um, and Jester doesn't really have the... He doesn't have the, the best run-ins with safety cars. They always seem to come out at a, a bit of an inconvenient time for him. But I don't think that was too bad there. But he is going to be under pressure here. Hypers does not have DRS yet. Um, you can see that Jester probably is using some ERS to defend because Hypers is they getting the same benefit. A slipstream. Is he going to run the outside though? Jester defends the inside perfectly well there and keeps the place. And I feel like this could be a battle worth watching as we're going to just stick on board with Hypers. Is he going to get a run in? Jester's already away to the right hand side there. No letting him um, have any luck in running the inside. Is he going to make it run the outside of 11? He is not close enough to even try and run side by side. But is he going to try in this final sector? Oh wow. I don't really know what's taking place. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was just on board. Calcif and Dingle Dolphin are going at it. Oh my, well, this is very close. Uh, Dingle Dolphin defended going into the fast right hander. And Cal Swift got so close to his rear, his uh, rear end. It was oh, yeah, oh, caught oh, me oh, by surprise. Oh, and Gareth. Oh no, sorry. Oh, and Bean. Bean made a beautiful move there, running the outside into turn thirteen there on Dingle Dolphin. Um. Oh, that was actually really good. That I, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was great. Yeah, like, I just I don't know noticed if you that. Saw it, but, yeah, but just like, noticed it on the, just, the corner of the screen. Like he just—I I didn't mean to cut you off, but like I was just kind of—I was just—I jumped on board with him because you were saying there was it all kicking after. We've got the McLaren and Ned Claw going off. Oh, and he's nearly came on and took Cal there away him for what I saw. And Bean's going to be tucking in right behind. Is he going to go up the inside into turn three? I don't think that would be. The best place, I think you'd be best waiting to the straight now that DRS is active once more. Um, Ned Claw, I think, has got damage? No, he doesn't, he? I'm trying to see. Don't think he does. Um, uh, looks um, like he's run out of grip. I don't know what there. The mediums look a bit short, but is this going to be an easy pass? Ned Claw is going to defend it. Bean is going to get run the outside into the breaking zone of turn 8, into this tight chicane. Are we going to see it work? Ned Claw does the break is late and I think he just does concede the place at the end up. Hopefully Ned Claw will notice that that's his teammate behind on a different strategy and he'll just let him bite as well. That's um, probably just revving out the engine. What is, oh, is that the glitch? Uh, oh, oh no. Oh wow that's close. <laughs> I think he's just revving out the engine. I've been on him a couple of times and he's 
revving out the gears. I, he's revving out sixth gear then, going on a straight. I mean, he should have been in at least seventh by that time. Um, like, and that's the kind of oh, he's taken quite a lot of quite a lot of curb there through turn thirteen, fourteen. He's probably going to pick up a one. Oh, oh and he's wow, he's just, Maxwell. Yeah. And he's that's just went wide. Mistake. I think he's just let everybody go. That is he can't a even big... go back to the pits. And he's going to have a baggy fan just driving by as well. Yeah, he's, he's not got his end plate. He's not got his front right end plate. Wing, so he's... That's the kind of thing there as well. Like, Spritely was... Like, I, I jumped on board with Spritely because you were saying that um, he was he was revving out the, 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 the engine, like out the gearbox. And then, effectively... I'm oh, Gareth is... Uh, he has yeah. <laughs> Back of Scott and he runs wide and is Scott gonna defend it? Gareth does pick up a penalty for that. He isn't he using DRS. Are you noticing that? He's not using DRS. Oh yeah. He's not opening it either. So uh yeah, I don't know. He told me his wheel settings or something to do with his wheel was what cost him a chance at a lap. Um but in uh Q two. Um I don't really know what's going on. At the moment. Uh, problems in his red ball car. Definitely, just get a few technical issues there, as he is looking for a wide pass Scott in the Ferrari Red Bull versus Ferrari. It's a, it's been a very modern fight between two constructors, and it has been for I mean the whole of the last decade in real life if you're talking. But um, Ferrari versus Red Bull, Scott uh, versus SPH Gareth. Is in the pits. SPH, and after ten laps on the mediums. So he'll be going to the hards, he is going to commit to the one-stop strategy as well, but we're going to see Gareth closing in, closing in, closing in. Is he going to commit to a move up the inside into turn one? No, he just kind of backs out right at the last minute, but he's going to again run on turn two on the exit. Is Scott going to just let him have the inside? Gareth's not getting the purchase off some of these turns. Scott's probably just using his ERS quite efficiently here to just defend and keep Gareth at, behi uh, at bay, so... Um, this battle between Gareth and Scott can probably brew on for a oh, while. Oh, there's a Gareth dead pulls up round. Dead pulls round. He's caught the rear wheel of Dingle Dolphin. He stuck his nose again. So oh, and he's just... came out. Oh, oh, oh my oh. word! And I will <laughs> say, good job, Gostin was on. Oh, hypers <laughs> and crafty. Hypers <laughs> and crafty is side by side. I think going into the fast right hander. Oh, that's Hypers, close. Is he going to make it run the outside? Jester defending brilliantly again. Get into turn 11. Jester's putting on a very stellar defensive performance here. Um, and Hypers is just you know, pushing him, uh, pushing all the buttons and trying to make a move work. And Jester's just committing, st standing his ground, committing to his position. Are they both going to come in? Right, Hypers is staying out. Jester's in. Is the overcut going to work? Dodgy's come in, so that's interesting. I would have thought Hypers would have got the call. But I think maybe they have discussed amongst themselves, like, right, Hypers will do with Jester Disney. And then, so Hypers have stayed out. Is the overcut really effective? Or is the tyre wear really going to be past a point that it's, um, not going to work? it's not going to work? I don't know. I think the undercut usually is quite powerful. Um, but yeah, like you say, at the end of the stint, we might see a bit of action. I don't know where SVH is on track. He's on the pit straight. Where is that racing point going to come out? Uh, oh no, sorry, not even racing point. Uh, here he is. Yeah, here is that racing point. The racing point is out ahead of the Mercedes. So uh, yeah, the overcut has worked, and uh, Crafty is way ahead. They're getting the benefit of being at the end of the pit lane by the looks of it. I think the pit lane in France is quite. It's, 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 it's one of the slower pit lanes as well, but it's also one of the tightest. There isn't really much room for manoeuvre in the, the pit lane and in the garages, so I could imagine it is quite, it's quite a process to get in, get the tyres changed, and back out on the track once again. I'm on board with SPH, though, as he is right on the rear wing of Dodgy. Um, Dodgy um, does have the benefit of fresher tyres, but SPH has the benefit of having these tyres up to temperature, so um, SPH will really be on the back of Dodgy. Um, at least until the uh, dodge gets the temperatures into these tyres and even um, in between the SPH you can just see through turn 11 as well like the car just looks like it's it just looks like it's floating I don't know how to explain that but like you know that way when you're going 
flat through a turn because it's an easy flat, like turn 11. And then the back of the car just kind of looks like it's gliding out. Like it's looking like it's about to break into an oversteer, like tank slapper. But then yeah. it just kind of plants itself. Like it's it's a strange um, description, but that's like, I feel that's the best I could really do. Like you know any kind of justice, but. Um, Crafty is ahead. Just about. Is, they haven't really gained or lost much, but yeah, Crafty will have the benefit of his tyres being up to temperature straight away. I think the undercut is really proven to be the kicker because Dodgy and SPH have lost a lot of time by putting that bit earlier. Because um, Baggy Fan splits the two racing points for 8th, 9th, and 10th, and it's a three second gap between Hypers and. Um, SBH, eh, no, Dodgy, sorry. Um, but talking about moves, we've got Jules going up the inside, and Maxwell, we just caught the tail end it there, Maxwell spun, he's just kissed the rear wing, he Jules in front, and somehow that was enough for him just to lose all grip, all momentum, all confidence, and the car just throws itself into a spin. Is he going to keep it the way of Scott Laney and Paul? He is. I don't it's going to be close any with damage, Paul. Though. Ah, uh, he's got out of the way. Paul and Scott Laney. Paul and Scott yeah. Laney are going at it for P11. He's in the pits. Uh, I was going to say it's a bit early, but I forgot it was on the medium, so uh, I think <laughs> that's a fair time to come in. Um, this is the main the main changeover point for the drivers. This is when we're going to see them. Oh, this is close. In. Uh, crap, the leaders. The leaders have caught up to a battle between Josie and Jules. This is not good for the leader. Oh, this is going to get close. Oh, and, oh, and Jester's got a slide on, and Hypers going to run the outside. I think he's gone he's off the off track. The track there, but he's went off the track there to make the move work. I, I don't know about that, mm, Max. I think that. Yeah. Be, he needs I'm, to get that back. I'm not sure about that either. I'd, I'd not be happy with that about that in the cockpit. Uh, not sure if. Crafty even knows he went off the track, but yeah, that. Uh, but the problem is, Hypers is going to be cruising up to the back of Jules, but Jules has DRS, goes down the inside, this is going to get close again. Oh, is Hypers going to look around the outside? Surely not. Oh, that's going to be close. Wow, oh, that is close. Don't shut the door, Jules, don't shut the door. Hypers, oh, he's gone, he's switching, they've both switched sides here. The Hypers is on the outside, Jules on the inside, worn mediums against fresh hards. Jules keeps the place. Oh, this isn't their fight. This isn't their battle. Jules just getting closer to Jonesy. Hyper's just getting closer to Jules. Jester getting his way back in. And Hyper's getting a bit of a slide on the exit of 12. Jester's trying to get himself back into this battle. I, I do feel like maybe he has been... I wouldn't say Rob just yet. I would say maybe oh, he's been hard done by. With the, oh, he's wide. He's very Hyper's wide. Hyper's gone really wide. Jester's running outside. Is he going for the switch back? Is he going to hold it? Oh, Jester got it. takes got the it. place. And this is going to be a battle between these two. And then they've got Jules and Jonesy to deal with as well in front. So this could be a really interesting dynamic to have unfold in front of us. Um, as we see Jules just kind of drifting wide there um, on board the racing point of Hypers. Um, we've got Jester. Jester. I I don't know, Max. Like, what, what, what do you do? Like, oh, yeah. you don't want <laughs> the, the two drivers in front holding you up, but you don't want to risk it. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. like they are entitled to race, but Hypers is just going to be all over the oh, back. It's all Jester. over the track, though. Hypers is all over the track at the moment, trying to get past Chester. But the problem is, Jules and Josie are in their own battle, and they're going to go side by side once again into the breaking zone. Jonesy goes ridiculously deep and that's going to hold him up even more and surely SPH and Dodgy they'll just join this battle as well. Um, and even Scott Laney, look at Scott Laney he's only what five seconds behind uh, Dodgy. Oh that's close. This is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is edge of the seat stuff as we see Jonesy and Jules battling left and right, oh every piece of my. track and then some getting used just to keep places and try and trade as well. Jester's having to watch behind. 
he does not want to really involve his cell right. in front, and I think the pressure's been eased now because Jonesy isn't in it anymore, but that's just meant that hyper. Yeah, but SPX look behind dodgy. Them. Yeah. They're all here, it's... and they're all waiting for it. Like, um, it's, I, I mean, I, I, it's, they are entitled to race. Like, oh, oh look at Hyper's, oh, <laughs> that's too close. I'm not going to lie, if that was me, my, oh, is that a lag? That was a wee lag oh, there. Oh, SVH is off the, the track. Year, SVH is off the track. Oh, wow, he made a slight mistake. Managed to, uh, well, he picked up a time penalty for his troubles. Um, but yeah, Dodgy is all over the back of him. Hyper's all back over, all over the back of Crafty. I can't really speak. Crafty's got DRS to defend, so should be fine. Scott Laney is cruising up to the back of this battle as well. Even SLR Bean is not uh, out of the question, and the chain behind him. So yeah, it's still all, all to play for if they keep battling. And we've got Bean just making a place on Paul there as well, and Plum's just gonna. Eat slowly catch up as well as Gareth so one train for the lead one train for effective P5 it looks to be P6 because Scott Laney's just kind of running his own race two seconds ahead and um, you can see him there just going through the fast right hander there we just saw before the camera angle changed we've got um, Jester and oh, Jules and inside. Jules is locked up yeah Crafty's he's gonna benefited oh, and we've yellow got flag. we've got a yellow oh, flag a single dolphin single dolphin's round at the oh, chicane. Jules is squeezing Hypers onto the apex of 14 and he's pushing him into the other side. Is Hypers going to get the run? He is. That's gave Jules, <laughs> uh, no Jules, that's gave Jester uh, a wee bit of breathing room, but it's really no came too much. Jules is still on the outside, Hypers, so I would watch. Jules is going to try and get on the outside. Is he going to make it work? He has to just settle for filtering in behind and we're going to have SBH and Dodgy right on this battle as well. Steve -O is leading as well, so Steve -O's still on uh, 12 lap old medium, so he'll be coming yeah. in soon as well, and he'll probably be looking to filter in. Let me just check. I don't know how long a pit stop is. Would you say it is about 20 seconds? 20 seconds? Uh, yeah, 21? but if there's a safety car right about now, um, he filters in somewhere in this battle. Um, probably behind Dodgy, so he's but then he, I think he's, unfortunately, with an extra stop he's going to have to make, he's going to filter in behind, probably around where Scott is, I'd say. Uh, but unfortunately, probably around, yeah, probably around where Cal Smith is, because he's obviously pit again. So I'd say around there. Definitely. Um, I feel like I, I'm, I'm slowly being swayed by the idea, yellow flags for... Um, the McLaren of is that Steve-O? Oh, Steve-O. He has made a mistake. Made a mistake. In? He's in. Ah, he's coming out. Uh, well, I think we, the mediums might have. I mean, yeah. Is, we talked that one up, so didn't I think we? He's done fine. <laughs> uh, we've we've we've, we've kind of we've kind of cursed you, Steve-O, so we can apologise for that. Um. Um. But Steve-O is going to be in the pits. It'll be interesting to see what he comes on to. Another fresh set of mediums. That's interesting. Is it fresh? Well, that is the question. Well, it is because it's a zero lap, so it is fresh. Don't know what you're talking about, Riggs. Um, but we've got, <laughs> we've got this battle brewing between Jester and Hyper front, and Jules is, is really helping these two at the front because um, Jules is crucially outside the DRS zone. He keeps creeping in it, but he keeps jumping out it at the most important times. Is he going to keep it through turn Six and seven, he is just in the zone. Has he got DRS? He does. But that means Jules just drifting in and out the DRS zone means that he's pushing SBH and Dodgy back, and Dodgy's already lost 1.7 seconds. I don't know why, though. Um, I'll try and see. He's not got any damage, um, so I don't know if he's just like a wee, he's just like a wee, a wee spin or a wee off or whatever. Um, but yeah. Wait, hypers. Sorry, when you got. Yeah, so I don't know what happened to Dodgy. He seems to just drop off the back. Scott Lane, he's not really making any inroads. He's got Bean pressuring him behind. Jules is, yeah, kind of the uh, cork in the bottle at the moment. Uh, he he will probably just put on soft compound tyres and just go like hell. As Hypers oh. explores all of Circuit Paul Ricard, and uh, yeah, he is struggling to even. Get past Crafty at the moment, and Crafty's putting up a sterling effort to keep Hypers behind because Hypers is no slouch at all. As Jules carries on once again, his tyres must be crying out for 
a pit stop. His tyres have definitely been the distance. You can just see if you if you can just relax your eyes and you can see that they are warm. So it is really just a matter of how long he's going to go. It's not like he's dropping time either. Like he's not really he's not really slouching either. Like he is he is still keeping in touch and distance. He is with the BRS now. So as I say that, but um, he's going to have SBH right there, and I would assume SBH should be making quick work of. Um, this move, but at the same time, Jules is always getting the purchase off the corners when he needs it. Um, so, um, SPH does dart out the slipstream, does close up a lot in the break. Oh, so. wow. Just got, just got on board with Bean, and he's gone for the narrowest gaps around the outside. Had to take a little adventure off the track to make the move stick. Uh, for now, as Scott Lane's going to have a go back at him by the looks of it. It's going to be very close coming into this long right-hander. Will Scott Laney stick it back up the inside or around the outside? It doesn't look like there's a move on off of Bean. Does eventually keep the position. Um, and it's up into P6 after starting in 18th place, I think it was. I was definitely waiting the order. And, and there getting, he is. Um, we'll get Jules in. Yep. I was wondering why I seen some position changes at the top and I scrolled back up and it was just to see... Um, Jules had just pitted, um, but that means SPH is a two second gap to try and close in these final seven laps and he, um, the task is a bit bigger purely because he's on the oldest set of hard tyres as well, so um, got a bit of work today, I, I, definitely not impossible, but Hypers picks up a penalty, we'll try and avoid that once again, um, but it is just that for Hypers, SPH is a top three with 20 laps completed and seven left. Um, Still is a bit early for drive of the day, so we'll kind of leave that for a moment. Is there anything else you're seeing on the track, Matt? Before I tend to jump um, into it? Not really at the moment. Uh, Steve -O's, yeah, Steve -O's starting to make his way through Scott at the moment is all over the place on the hards. Um, so I expect Steve -O to. Well, I don't know, actually. They're both on overtake, so it's going to be a little bit harder for. Steve-O, Scott will fight for all he's worth. Will Steve-O go down the inside? No, he won't. He will back out. Um, but he's got to make a move soon because Jules has pitted for fresh mediums and he will try his best to uh, catch up to this battle and Cal Smith as well, making inroads. But yeah, really the only main battle is this one at the front. That's definitely where my eyes are right now. I'm just so intrigued to see how this is going to unfold, and it's just a very, it's just a very cat and mouse situation, really. Because Jester's, I think Jester's like had one of the races where yellow oh, flags in the club off. Cal That's Cal Smith. That's Cal Smith. Cal Smith spun He's... that turn twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I think on the exit turn twelve it must have been. Um, don't think he, he has hit the wall, so he has got big damage on the front right end plate, uh, but he will uh, venture into the pit lane. Uh, it is his race over, unfortunately. And I've just saw, I've just quickly jumped Ooh, on Steve and Scott. Steve O. Yeah. Yep. They, uh, just quickly flip back onto Hypers as well. positions. They're coming down the big straight. Is there going to be a move? Oh, is he going to try it? Jester's very valiant in defending. He's just, he's doing everything. He's doing everything he needs to. Like, he's doing everything right. Like, he's had a very valiant effort at the front. He's been very composed in defending for Hypers. There, even with Jules and Jonesy fighting um, in front of them on different strategies, Jester's been able to keep his cool, just keep Hypers behind. I mean, there was one time that Hypers did actually go by, but Jester quickly made work on that once Hypers made a mistake through the final turn as well, but um, Jester at the front has done everything he needed today so far. It's just a matter of keeping it for another six laps, and Hypers is definitely no going to give him an easy ride to the finish. He is wanting this one. Both of them are wanting this one. They're both hungry for it, so it is just going to be a, a, a very intense finale to this race. Five laps remaining, Jester will just kind of place in his car where he needs to place it. Like, he's just making Hypers think twice about what he needs to do. And Hypers isn't really doing too well. Both of them are actually doing too well on ERS. So both of them are kind of running the similar uh, energy levels. But it, it 
like we don't care in the fuel, so we don't know what fuel levels are being running, so there could be a, a, a similarity or a difference there. But um, Hypers really is giving chase. SPH and Dodgy, I think they were in it for a while, but they've just kind of got dropped off, and I think that's purely because Jules was just being the thorn in their side. They're, they're Kelly's heel, essentially. Surely you go for Dingle Dolphin is out and he is fully out of the session in and the exit of turn first turn twelve and it's a virtual safety oh, and car. Is tapped. Oh no no. Oh, oh and the is tapped. No. The back is just uh, that as well. I don't think so, but yeah, I think Crafty was probably just slowing down for his Delta and Kuipers has been too eager. Um, as he's quite close and now he's all over the road. Uh, I don't think there was really anybody at fault. I think Crafty was just slowing down for his Delta. Not much he could have done uh, on the exit there. Uh, well, his mid corner, really. Uh, but yeah, Dingle Dolphins obviously lost it through turn 12 and somehow smacked into the wall. That's a long way he's travelled um, to get there. Um, a flying That's Lemon's crashed as well. A flying lemon has crashed. Flying lemon. He's crashed fully crashed. Seven. Yeah. Flags. What is it going to be? Anything? It'd be, it'd be a very late call for a safety card, but are we going to get one in this late stage? I Doesn't look like it. Don't know. I don't think it will. It would have came out by now, but um, I'm surprised. It's all right. Okay, so it's, it's it's fine. It's good to go. <laughs> um, but a flying lemon has retired for the session, and hypers has stayed out. So. He's yeah. going to have so much understeer though. He has to lose in too much time, but it's in that third sector where he's going to lose at Mace because that's where you really need your front end grip. Oh, well, there's a big but... battle going on for P9 here. Jules is actually caught up to the battle, and Steve is still behind Scott. And uh, Jules is now past him, so. Yeah. Uh, I think Steve has been drifting quite a lot. And. The mediums haven't they really been up to scratch. Jules is going to be in the slipstream of the Ferrari of Scott in front. Scott is going to just stay to the main racing line. Jules up the inside into the braking zone. We're going to just see them fill in there. And Jules is going to take the place. So, um, and Steve will eat. I just jumped on board with Steve there quickly. But we'll talk about Scott first because he's going to try and make the move once again. Back on Jules. Try and repay the favour into the flat right hand. Return 11. Jules on the outside. Scott on the right. Hand side, Jules Hodge it running outside as he gives him a wee squeeze. Oof. 12, they're still side by side. And it's Jules going to hold it running outside. Scott's got the inside, Jules will run outside. And he makes it work! Running outside, he turned 12. And Scott is going to just try everything that he can. Try and throw everything and the kitchen sink at him to try and get the place back. And that's maybe going to allow Steve in um, as well. So Scott and Jules having a nice wee battle amongst themselves there and that's the kind of thing as well. Oh you've got Steve will just getting a bit up close there to the real wing of the Ferrari in front there as well. DRS will be open. We'll get SPH right on the back of Hypers as well. And it looks quite dark on the top end of the circuit. Yeah. Um Hypers is all over the road now, so I think it's game set and match at the moment to Crafty providing any uh extreme signs on dark to the left for Hypers. Um but yeah, I think the Mercedes will make the move and does. And now, go up into P2. And Hypers has got the run, no? Hypers has got the run. SPH has got the inside line. Maxwell's got the fastest lap. If Emily's predicted that, I mean... Oh, where's SPH? Oh, SPH? Where's he gone? <laughs> where's he away to? I have no idea. Is like, Hypers is running outside, SPH keeps it up the inside, Hypers is cutting back, he's going to have the outside for turn 12, and they're still going side by side, the skies are really dark here, are we going to have a late, 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 late threat of rain? That is the question, because it's really dark than what it was, maybe even not even too late. Oh, long where's Hypers gone? You can gone. see him understeering, understeer central in that racing point, he has got absolutely zero turn in, and zero grip on that, and I think... That is going to be it. I don't think he should be worth holding his teammate up. He will get fourth if he just lets his teammate go and allow Dodgy to try and get back and in. Flag. Talking to Sprightly. And that's for Sprightly. Yep, Sprightly's had a wee mistake. Are we off at turn eight? Um, so, definitely know how the race he would have wanted either. I feel like Hypers really should maybe concede the place to his teammate, try and give him a bit of a toad in the straight and just peel off um, like he did to SBH um, on the last lap. 
and oh yeah, it's was, it was really dark. Like, yeah. All of a sudden, um, Scott and Siva just pick up three second time penalties in the same corner. Um, just shows that they've been sharing the same piece of road and doing exactly the same thing <laughs> ever since Steve managed to catch up to Scott. But Scott still on the back of Jules, even with Jules's much fresher tyres. Um, but yeah, Steve is still staring at the back of the Ferrari at the moment. And Steve was getting zero ERS. Scott and Jules both still have at least twenty percent, and it's just really going to be a matter of. Just, I think it might come down to the final lap to decide what's going to happen here. Dodgy and Hypers are quite close together, and I'm still surprised that Dodgy is still not by his teammate. I feel like this is compromising his opportunity to try and get second off SBH. And Hypers again, you can just see him there because I'm on board with Dodgy, and he's no, he's not really kind of helping his teammate in any sense of the word, in any capacity. Like, if he doesn't move here, Dodgy should just go all out, ERS. Fuel mixed to Rich, his teammate right here is, it looks like he has let them by now, so I don't know if he is just listening in or no. Um, but I feel like that was about, I think that was the right call. Um, so, we've got a battle for P9 now, get into the final two laps there as well as Steve gets a bit of a slide on the exit. We'll just sit on board with Steve as he is right on the real wing of Scott and the slipstream going into turn one. Scott does have the PRS as well, and Jules looks to be just slowly inching away through this battle that's been going on for. Mason the standing Scott's run wide through two and he's run wide onto the curb on the exit of two as well and I thought Steve could have had a wee look in there, a wee, a wee sniff of opportunity was was right there for him but um, I think Steve just kind of looked a bit unstable through the exit of two as well so that's why both of them haven't really um, made any gains there, not in venture, not in gain, that's what they say but Scott again Max just looking that bit twitchy on the slower turns, I don't know if that is the hard tyres and the wear really kicking in. Steve is going to have the same problem with wear as well. It is late. Uh, it has eight laps um, on used mediums, but the tire wear is quite like when you know it's when you know the tires are degrading. You, you can you can feel it obviously, but like sometimes it does just drop like that. And I think Steve is maybe just kind of experiencing bits of that. He is doing everything that he can to keep in keep in touch with Scott. It's raining. Scott is it's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Oh, the rain! Bit late, but it's raining. Didn't even expect rain, but we've got a we've got a bit of a drizzle for the final lap of the race. As Jester is going to tour up the Paul Ricard circuit one final time. We'll just jump on board with him. He is running a uh, right, driver of the day votes as well quickly. Yes, um, get your driver of the day votes in as well. Um, we dodgy on the back of you dodgy on the back of SVH. Um, I've just watched a pretty decent battle between Baggy and Nedclaw for a whole 14th place. Yeah, Baggy uh, usurps the McLaren for now. Uh, but yeah, dodgy within the DRS while it's still available. And he's closing in, he's closing, he's closing. Is there a late lunge on the Cairns? I don't think there is in here anyway. SBH is still keeping that second place. You can see Jester just driving off in there in the distance. Two point six. It was two point something. It is one point eight. Stevo picking up penalties. The rain is picking up its pace as it is getting heavy. Oh, Stevo's going to go for the move. Getting... Stevo's surely going to go for the move at the end of the straight for tenth on track. Obviously, penalties will come after the race. When he go around the outside, this is going to be close between the McLaren well, and the Ferrari. It... He does when just Scott's about. Gonna... He's gonna just about makes it. He he made a brilliant move on the outside there to keep Steve uh, to get by Scott and prevented the switchback as well. But it's been about one man. It's been about Jester, cool, composed, commanding Victor. Checkered flag waves for him as the rain is picking up his pace. The checkered flag waves. Oh, dodgy Jester wins. And the Williams. Dodgy and it's wins. Dodgy that takes it. And dodgy. Takes the win. Bean on the podium. And Bean gets a podium. Alright, okay. And Hypers is dropping. Uh, Hypers is dropping fast. Oh, wow, he's dropping a lot. I think. Will Jules go ahead of him? Surely not. No, he doesn't. Yellow oh, Steve drops out of the points. Oh. And this is all the penalties being applied. These are, of course, unofficial, but. For as much 
Like, Jester had led for so long in this race, had such a commanding, authoritarian drive at the front. And he's lost it on penalties to Dodgy, mm -hmm. who we thought was going to be able to after his battle with SPH and Jules in the midway session. Um, so that is definitely through. I oh, don't think Carl Smith through. scratched over the line. <laughs> oh, that, that's one way to finish, I suppose. And that's nah, just gave his, his pit crew and his team a wee bit of work today. Sprightly is going to be the last of the finishers. Um, and um, uh, we are going to get some driver of the day votes in. Just uh, yeah. gets one vote. Plum gets one. Bean gets one. Uh, trying to think. Uh, Bean has got three votes, four votes. Yeah, Bean's got four votes, and yeah, I don't think Dodgy's got maybe one. Uh, Plum's got two. Jessica's got one, but yeah, Bean is going to get driver of the day, and well deserved. Definitely, it's been a very, a very stellar drive for the Red Bull driver. 18th to the podium is definitely, it's a feat that um, can, it's, it's a very satisfying feat. It's a very satisfactory drive for him. I think he will be well more than pleased with coming in with a podium when it all looked, um, it all looked lost in the, the wet conditions at the start of Q1. Um, but it is dodgy that ends up taking the win. It will be it's not on track, and Jester does miss out by a narrow second uh, due to penalties. Bean ends up on the podium. SPH loses it um, in P4. Scott Lane in fifth, strong drive for him as well as Gareth fifteenth to sixth, Plum seventeenth to seventh as well. So all the people kind of really outside the top ten really benefit due to the strategy. Hypers, Jules, and Paul rounding out the top ten. Jonesy, Scott, Steve, the wee battle of the rain there at the end. Baggy fan, Ned Claw, Maxwell, and Cal Smith. And the two Alpha Towers of Cal Smith and Sprightly were the last of the finishers. Um, and a race that was. that was thoroughly exciting up and down the field. There was plenty of battles, plenty of action, plenty of that. And then at the end, for the final two laps or so, there was the nice wee drizzle of rain. The threat of rain was a bit late in the race, but I mean, it's always nice to see some. It is always nice to see some rain. Uh, with it, it came a little bit late, um, but something for the drivers to keep aware of. And uh, we have all three drivers in, so uh, yeah, we'll get we'll get the interviews underway. Uh, we'll start off with SR Bean, who's made his way up into P3 after penalties have been applied. Um, I think only on the one three-second time penalty, and uh, yeah. Uh, Starting from 18th place, I'm pretty sure you uh, were not happy with crashing and qualifying, but uh, finishing P3 at the end of the day, uh, you couldn't ask for much more. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Make sure you've ticked your box everyone as well. Uh, yeah, cheers. Um, got it, obviously, for quali. Uh, I, th I think we're on the, the verge of dries uh, for slicks and... Uh, I went out and just lost it on that fa that fast right hand. I couldn't recover it, so I was straight in the wall. Uh, so yeah, can't really say much more about that. And then I was lucky to that coming from the back and having a look. And I was hoping, obviously, everybody might hit each other at T1. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got a bit of a, a tap and ended up spinning round because I did I did get quite a good start. Um, but uh, yeah, then it was just a case of trying to hunt down the guy in front and then the guy in front of him. And uh, I mean, to be fair, I was happy with with P5, uh, but then obviously to get P3 with penalties, um, I'm even more happier. So, uh, yeah, happy with that. And, uh, you know, well done to uh, Dodgy and uh, Jester as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think you uh, made the best of a bad situation from qualifying. So, well done to you. You also got drive of the day yeah. from the fans. So, uh, yeah. Oh, well thank done. you very much. Cheers. Uh, we'll move on to Crafty. Um, I... I sense that you may be uh, slightly disappointed with um, missing out after leading the majority of that race. Um, I think it was just a second in the end. Uh, Dodgy managed to creep in there with no penalties. Um, had a little bit of an incident with uh, Hypers under virtual safety car. 
I assume that was you for that was for you slowing down for your Delta. Um, yeah, 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 talk us I, through that race. Again, a great race. Really enjoyed that one. Um, after a good result last week as well, got pole position as well. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> I went for across the line and said it was first. I was a bit shocked at that, but there you go. <laughs> just tried to get round T1 um, without any incidents and then just try and keep everybody behind me. Papers put me under a lot of pressure at the start. Um, yeah, I just kept it going and then I wasn't expecting Dodgy to be the one that passed me under penalties. I got myself a three second penalty, but I, knew, I wasn't sure whether anybody else would have had one or not. So well done, Dodgy, and well done, Bean, 18th to 3rd. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, Dodgy was not the only person to get not get a penalty that entire race. So, uh, yeah, I think obviously another second and you'd have had the win. Uh, yeah. So maybe on another day, <laughs> another day it could have been yours. Um, but yeah, I think a good race nonetheless. It's good to get points on the board, obviously. So uh, absolutely. Well Thank you. Uh, so on to our race winner then. Dodgy, uh, well, add it again. Um, <laughs> no penalties. Uh, and yeah, keeping it clean. One need a day in the end. Talk us through that. Firstly, I just want to apologise to Jester. He was fastest in qualifying. He led the race. He was the fastest in the race. And it's just a shame on the penalties. But the clean, the cleaner driver managed to get it in the end. But sorry, sorry, Jester. That's all I can say. <laughs> that is what it is. No way. Don't, don't apologise for, for driving a good race. <laughs> you should have won that race. Yeah. That, that, that was race. A, uh, the hypers put me under too much pressure. Forced me away yeah. a couple of times. Yeah, so it was just it was, for me, we were keeping it clean. I knew the guys in front had um, penalties, and Hypers obviously kept me in, in, informed with what um, Crafty was doing because obviously I don't have the the uh, chance of finding that out, but he was in the position to do that. So I, I knew if I just kept it clean and kept the pace there, I was okay. Yeah, and uh, you did just that, and uh, well, extending your championship lead once again. <laughs> uh, with a win, obviously Hypers dropped a lot of positions due to penalties at the end. Um, not his finest day in terms of track limits, um, but yeah, uh, he got uh, past him at the end. I think he uh, let you through in the end because he had damage, obviously, yes, uh, yeah. which proved, proved vital in the end. Because if he hadn't let you through, then uh, you wouldn't be on the top step of the podium. So that's just, well, that's yeah. true. Yes. Um... Uh, it was nice of him to do that. He said he was slower. He said he had brain damage, and he just said, "Look on the straight, just just go for it." So um, it was nice of him. Bit of team orders there. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, well, giving you the, all the honours on the day. Uh, but yeah, well done. Thanks. I'm sorry, uh, Jeff. Back to you. Back to, <laughs> <laughs> back to you, then, Reese. Um, I think we've pretty much covered. Covered all the bases. I thought that was an act- uh, a very thoroughly enjoyable race. I very much enjoyed that start to finish, um, and I think I actually did predict just for pole. So I mean, I will take that. Um, I was Thanks, one of the two. <laughs> uh, so I had a lot of faith in you. I had a lot of faith. Um, so like, I was um, honestly, I was really enjoying that race. There was plenty of battles up in the field, especially there was a big period of the race where. Like the leaders were kind of stuck behind Jones and Jones the only wee battle of the day, and that was a very gripping bit of the race as well. And we didn't even know, like, up in the booth, like, we didn't even know, like, what was really going to happen and how it was really going to play out. Um, but oh, thankfully, it was all, all swimming through there. But I mean, that would have probably caused a, a wee bit of. We got a headache there, but um, honestly, just want to uh, just pass my congratulations to the top three, be known driver of the day as well, and just to everybody for a, another stellar race. And I'm very much looking forward to the next one. We'll get one final stream running the circuit of Paul Ricard tomorrow night at seven o'clock British Standard Time for the Elite Race before we move on in a week's time to Spielberg for the Austrian Grand Prix. And we would very much love to have you alongside us once more. Um, I don't have anything else to add, I think that's. But just my congratulations to everybody and very much looking forward to seeing you in the next one.